<laughs> look, look how close to the red the white ball landed there. <laughs> this is what we want, isn't it, Ben? We want a tight final like yours and mine last year. 11-10 in the second final. It has to be 11-10, otherwise this is a waste of time. What is the point? It makes it a lot more exciting. Obviously, you've mentioned, obviously you've mentioned um, how many people to leave and how many groups have been on here, so hopefully this will get uh, bigger and better next year. Absolutely brilliant this time it's been. Yeah, I think that's the, the uh, direction that this game's heading in, actually, in Australia, and, and this comp's certainly been good for the game. Um, bigger than last year, we have 12, 12 more people than last year, and more prize money as well. So. We haven't paid out, obviously you mentioned the $1,000 to the um, out of bullets comp, so $1,000 to the winner. What, 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 last year. what was the total prize money, Ben? Ben um, organised most of this tournament with Travis Crawley. He's done a great job. Do you know what the total prize pool was? The total prize pool was around about 23000 24000 up from about um, 17000 from last year. So uh, that's with, the, with, with a couple of pros pulling out last minute, or one pro. Um, but yeah, no, been huge. So very, very um, happy about the whole thing. It's good money. good money. It is good money. It is good money, and hopefully people keep paying it. A thousand dollars is a lot to pay out um, just to play in tournament, but we all back ourselves. We all we all believe we can win it. And unfortunately, the pros are the one side of the entries that we're we're um, you know maybe for the next couple of years we're a bit worried about. Whereas the intermediates, we had 13, 14 intermediates this year, um, which is massive in Melbourne. Hopefully wherever it goes next year, if it's here, then we'll see. But hopefully we can gain a few players. Yeah. Well, no, good job, and um, I'm sure it'll get bigger and better. Money generates interest, and um, working with QBall.tv has uh, been fantastic. Well, we do know that guys like the Sean Budd will catch up in the next uh, 12 months. And, um, you know, Best eight ball player I've ever seen, so I'm sure we'll be seeing him next year. Anyway. It would, would be great to have the bud. The bud is. <laughs> tell me he's not the he, best. He tell does. Me, tell me Sean Bud is not the best player out of snookers I've ever seen in life. He does some um, an amazing. Uh, he does amazing things on the pool table. Things that you would never even think about, no. Ben. Um, the, the reason but it's great to doing watch. things you wouldn't even think about is because the white ball is the spot that <laughs> we would hopefully want to be. He's, uh, a freak though. he's all out of attack. He's all out of attack, and when he's when he's on, he's um, an amazing player to watch. He doesn't even have to be on. Rusty's down his last two yellows, and he just looks like he's a bit straight. He doesn't have the best angle on that. Love you, Sean. That second last yellow. I'm sure, he wanted to run that yellow down the rail, but too straight on this. Yeah. What a, that's a, yeah, it's a good effort. Yeah, I'm happy with that. He's got a shot for relic. Yeah, he's actually much better off than he was. Uh, he was just stunned the light, so it's a massive shot. On, great oh, shot, yeah, yeah, yeah. great yeah. shot, Rusty. Yeah. And he gives the little fist bump. And watch Any him smack danger, the table. He's, he's two to one on, just punch the table after this black. Here we go. Wait, wait, there we go. Oh, no. There we go. You're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points for Wheeler. <laughs> Someone said to me that table abuse, and then uh, someone else said no, that's his stamp of approval. What's what surprised me then is that uh, Rusty has called us the best table that I've played in his life. Obviously, because they're big pockets and um, he's, in the final, he's in the final, and, and um, he needs big pockets. Uh, he doesn't need big pockets. He's so the way he plays the game, it helps him with the big pockets. But He's talked about this table the whole weekend, and all he does is beat it up. He's he smashed this table with his fist that many times. I think his fist would be in worse condition than the table. I think I might have to put this in there. I think this in the That's uh, yeah. Yeah. any of those are nasty. Rusty's played a rather large finish, and tip on his, he's got a bit of confidence about him right now. Whereas he wouldn't have been about half an hour ago. You always probably ought to go here. Um, I'll put one in the corner, get down the corner rail. Just got the ball on each side, he's going to it. He's gone the complete opposite way. That, uh, have you had that problem the whole time? It's happened uh, quite a few times. Because yeah. Rusty always <laughs> plays the right way. No, no, Rusty's 
<laughs> Dusty likes the white ball flying around the table, so how the hell are you meant to find that? Well, at least the, the viewers at home get to see the contrasting <laughs> thoughts and styles. Yep, yep, yep. Then they can make their own decisions. Yep. Out of action again. I'm sure the white's about to fly around off three cushions now and, and find somewhere that Rusty knows where the white's going to land. Let's just see how late. One he cushion. Leaves well done, Rusty. Let's just, let's just see how long he leaves it to, to clear Brent, this Brent Reed would have been really happy with that shot because Rusty would normally fly it around. Brent would say to him, let me just make it a little bit more basic. Mate. Off the right. Oh, he's not the stream. Oh, he's, he's, he's called the miscue. He's, he's put the finger on the tip. He's called, he hasn't chalked his cue. He miscued. He didn't even hit any ball on my top one. one he hasn't even chalked the cue before the shot. He's miscued it. Rookie mistake. I'm not sure what. <laughs> Reedy would have been devastated with that. Plus this. Well, look, that was, that was a pretty crucial mistake because Joel was going to go for all, you would imagine. Yeah, there's uh, no danger of Joel, I wouldn't have thought. So. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to tell on this camera angle actually where that yellow is in the, on the back rail, if, if, there's any, if there's any space there. If you can t actually take it off the rail, off the red, and, and it's a basic shot. It's not that easy. And we don't know where those two yellows around the black spot are actually going into the center or not. So. Well, that, that's a luxury he has, though. He's got two Mind visits, you, so Joel's actually two. hurrying up for a change. Um, so maybe it is pretty basic. Who knows? Very slow and methodical when he is a freak show. He's world class, Mr. Younger. But he's got a bit of angle. He's got a bit of angle here, and he, if he rolls it in dead weight, he's got to take the yellow down the bottom here, off, off the red, and it's still a bit tricky, even with two shots. Look, he can do it with two. Uh, he can do it with one, probably, and put that yellow inside the red, but he really wants to pop this to make it a bit easier and take the pressure off. So I'd be happy to see this one going. And lovely shot. He doesn't seem real happy about it, so maybe he's a bit short. He might be playing this yellow inside the red now. I can't see, I can't see how he... Everyone at home is obviously watching this. I can't see how he doesn't take it off the red. Obviously, it's not, not on. Um, but, Ronnie, how, how can you see? He's got to play this with a bit of pace to get on the two in the centre on the, on the right-hand side. They don't look on on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, obviously, they do. So, just play a bit of side, maybe. A bit of side, top, top side, and take it off the red. And, and uh, home and host. Well, he was hoping to land on the, he might be on the middle, but could be in and off as well. So obviously dead straight on that, there's no angle at all. Same shot really, because the, the white ball's here. Well, if you want to play that shot, you probably should have just rolled through two inches. Got two shots, Mr. Delaney. Rolling through two inches probably would have been a better shot than having well, a, a yellow yeah, up the top. Obviously the white ball's the, the issue, it's not, it's not so much about the pot, he's got two. I think we'll just clip off this. Um, Pip off this one on the right, avoid the in-off, take the take the yellow out a little bit, get the other yellow out in the open, and happy days. Just like that, without the... Oh, perfect. Played it a little bit worse than how it is the color of the A little bit of work to do here. It's not straightforward getting on that yellow. And now it's tough. It's very tough. You've got to play side on the new cloth, where the... How tough are these to play with right-hand side? out of the middle because they just don't they, they don't take the side. I wouldn't even play it. Well he's got two I'll choices then. He can play a, a really good positional shot or he can make sure he just has a shot at yellow and no, leave that. I'm talking. No, I'll just give up and pot the red. Just give up and pot the red. That's Ben Noonan at his best. Potting the red when you're on yellows. What I was saying is he can he might be playing this one down here now Ben. If you can get the white ball back to where he is about now, I think he'd be happy. I don't know how straight it is. He, he's worried about it. You have to come off three rails and, and just... The white should be in the middle of the table after this shot. Yeah. Only one of another six inches, but... 
Ooh, this is tricky because you know what? This would not be tricky if that red wasn't there, it, whether it's on or not. If he's got a foot block, it doesn't matter. That red, that red, you got there. That red. Maybe you should just pop the red bin. Takes your side out that that badly. It feels like you can't pot it with that red there, even though you got a full pocket. It takes your side out. See, look at this. Shot. That's a great shot. That is a brilliant shot. That is an absolutely brilliant shot. He used the red to perfection, didn't he? That is huge. Four four. He was the first one in, then the, he was in and out for about 10 weeks um, because of work and got back in on the Thursday night. Waltz, is, Waltz was on in and makes the final. Go. Waltz is in, makes the final. And he goes in off the yeah, He's done it a few times, hasn't he? Uh, a couple of times in this match, have that could that can make a, lot, a big difference, can't it, Benny? The, 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 break, the break on these tables, um, I don't know too much, but the break, the break on these tables is, yeah, the, the, the pockets are a little bit too big um, for stand, but at the end of the day, if you've been beaten other than a couple of guys that just haven't really had a shot because the, the breaks have just come out terribly and um, whatnot, but the tables have played good, they've, they've been solid all weekend. No real variance in the cloth or the cushions too much, so no one can really complain. But yeah, the, the break, the break. I, I said to I said to people during the week, I said the, the break will be the main main thing in this comp, and I said there's a couple of guys that um, are going to be standouts. Uh, they were the best breaks in Australia. I actually said I gave uh, Rusty and Jimmy Della a, a big chance because of their breaks. They got two of the biggest breaks in Australia. Or uh, well, two biggest, in my opinion. So, yeah, and they, they, they both, you know, two out of the top four. And Joel's, um, Joel's done very well. If he hasn't been hitting the ball as much, he's done very well because he hasn't played much in the last few years, at least the last five or six years in the Gold Coast. So, pretty impressive. Very good call about the break there. Joel's running into a bit of trouble. Not sure what options he has here. Might be able to put that yellow up the top off the red. He might be looking at that now. Looks like that's the way he's going. Oh, didn't even have to go off the red. It's a great shot. And if this bottom yellow's on, he's in business. I would like to be ma just had a phone call. I'd like to apologise for the commentary. Apparently, no one's heard a thing in the last 10 minutes. It's been really funny too, by the way. Ronnie's, uh, Ronnie's been brilliant, so I'd like to apologise for that. Apparently too far away from the mouth. I'm okay with that normally, but, you know. Yeah, it's a good shot. He's, I think he's on that yellow towards the middle. Just roll that in. Get him on the corner. If the black goes in the centre at the same pocket, he's actually about to pop the uh, yellow in the middle. Quite a simple finish. Nice little shot, you can just screw back about two or three feet over towards the middle pocket. It's nice to see your last ball down near the black like that and you don't have to do too much of the white, isn't it? Yeah, 
Yeah, thanks, mate. Are you commenting on a shot that I played earlier today, or no. just? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this table's tricky. It, it, it's uh, the cloth's very, very new. It's obviously brand new, and and um, when you've been playing, Joel, what have you played? About a hundred frames today, 80, 90 frames. You start to your arms become jelly, and your legs are all over the shop. He's only hit that by a mile because he probably didn't want to screw off in the middle. So, um, yeah, it's tricky. But this is where his snooker action will come in here. He just knock this straight in with a bit of bit of drag and play the black in the corner. I reckon. Don't let me down, Mr. Young. Tell you what, that pouch. Have you have you mentioned how much that pouch stands up? We'll be putting the black in the right hand corner po uh, middle pocket. I'm saying he's going to underhit it. That's all I'm saying. Oh, whatever, Kelly. Oh, it's just a good kill. It's just a good kill. Great mix watching there. Nobody puts the balls down the red like Joe Younger. Nobody. Shouldn't miss the black boot. 5 4 up. Very nice. It's neck on neck here at Prince's Entertainment Centre. 5 5 4 in the final. Just like to say uh, hello to Mr. Bud. Let's cop the message from Mr. Sean Bud saying I would I sound a lot better when he couldn't hear me. I love your tips too, mate. You are the best. You are the best punter that's ever lived. By you, mate. By you. I'm off. I'm gone. I'm gonna get Rusty on the uh, commentary now. Rusty. Rusty Real is about to come and have a chat halfway through uh, being to school. I think we could talk him into it. Well, he's that tight. I reckon we buy him a drink. He's a chance to uh, chance to come and have a bit of commentary before he actually plays his next frame. What do you reckon, guys? What do you reckon, Kimo? Can we get Rusty on. Rusty's the only. By the way, Rusty's the only bloke that's taken smoke breaks the whole the whole tournament. Everyone else has been respectful to their opponent that doesn't smoke. Rusty, that's ah, just Rusty. He's all right. He loves a smoke break. I think Joel's gone on the toilet, so he's taken the opportunity to go out for smoke. A couple of puffs. Now Joel's broken off there. It's another dry break. Just going to get the score changed. It is 5-4 to Joel, so those scores will probably be reversed. A couple of seconds. Uh, Rusty's grabbed the reds. I don't think he's got too many problems here. It might be difficult navigating from the second red to the next one, but he's, he's going to come down the bottom of the table, so he's on one of those. He'll be sitting pretty... Pr Pretty sweet if you can knock this in and hold the white. So you definitely be looking to get rid of these three down the bottom first. Just needs to leave himself in a good spot to get that white back up to the middle of the table for the other two. Probably going to use that red in the middle of the table to do that. Screw back a foot and a half. Shouldn't be any problems here really. Nice shot. Imagine you go the one on the rail next. Mm. 
Oh, that might have been a kick. It looked like heavy contact. Didn't white or didn't move very far. And he's forced to change his shot. Well, on these tables, you can probably afford to go for a red down down the rail like this. It's um, you just sort of have to be within within the area, and it should drop. So, still favourite to pot this. Nice shot. Probably hit the hit the rail about an inch up, but still went. Come on! And he gives the big come on. Makes no mistake with a whack. So five all. George having a good old laugh. <laughs> Match being played in good spirits, good to see. Gentlemen, we're going to have Brent Collier joining me now for a few frames. We'll be here in a minute. It'll be interesting to, to get some of Brenton's ideas in this match. Hello, Brenton. Oh, hello, Ronnie. How you going, mate? I'm good, thanks. So um, we're five all here, Brenton, and can you predict the winner from here? Uh, the whole time I thought it was going to be Joel, but the last the last out, I really impressed not just the out, but the enthusiasm of the show when he'd come on, and because I'm I don't mind myself doing a little bit of uh, theatrics, but. It shows that he really gives a fuck. Sorry, what I mean is it shows that he cares. And I think he might just uh, push on from here and get over the line. Thank you for that bit of insight, Brenton. He's nudged the red here. He, he may have nudged it enough. It might be on this shot, but if it isn't, um, it's end of visit, I would say. He might be okay here. I think he can run that down the rail. It's close. But he'll be looking to run this down the rail and put the other one at the top of the table next shot to finish off the rest of the yellows down the bottom. And that is a bucket. That hit the rail probably about six inches up. So here he's just going to float down to the bottom of the table, and you'd imagine you'd you'd imagine that he's going to clean he's going to clean up the rest of the yellows here. The only problem would be the Chinese snooker, but it's a pretty easy rolling. That makes it six five. And. This is the only problem here, but it is part of that nice. You couldn't see any difficulty here, I wouldn't think. Probably the length of the day may be the only problem. We've got a nice angle, probably with the top left. Let's bring that across. Looks like he's playing top right. <laughs> Maybe it's just the angle that we're on. 
And that's pretty perfect. And you just screw back a couple of feet and whack the eight in the middle for 6-5. The only thing I will say that this shot on probably any other table that you play the major competition on is not as easy as this is. I wouldn't be loving this shot right now if I was playing at another time, say Gold Coast last year, which I wasn't at, but I don't know if this would be the the easiest shot in the world. Ron, you were there, or can you... Well, these shots, under normal circumstances on, on other tables, are definitely missable. Um, but you'd be very upset if you missed this ball on this table. Um, and he, he must have had too much of an angle there. I thought it was a bit straighter so he could suck straight back, but he's um, obviously not executed that the way he wanted to. I'm not sure exactly where he was trying to get the white, actually. I would have, yeah, I would have thought maybe some bottom left and, and bring it back up the uh, middle of the table for the black in the middle, but he's still on. He's still on. It's just a harder cut now. Um, but Rusty will certainly be licking his lips after seeing that. It's a fairly difficult shot under normal circumstances, but when you're the five-all in the final, Brenton, it's um, pretty hard. Oh. I wouldn't like to be playing this shot right now, especially not with uh, Rusty Wheeler on the other side of the white ball. Rusty's jumped off that table. Like the, the only thing he wants to do is smash these reds in. He'll take about, let's say, a minute 30 to put these reds. And I reckon he's thinking right now, not even thinking about the first match that he lost. And he's all over this now. I reckon, in my opinion, he may just run away with this, I think. With the... Not sure whether the choice of shot or how we play the shot that uh, Joel's played. He might be a little bit tired. And Rusty's proved to us all that he doesn't mind the finish line. And if anything, he runs hard to it. 6-5 I think I think I think my money is on Rusty but I've I have been wrong before well as we know anything can happen and we saw there that just what's one shot and uh, we were expecting Joel to be 6-5 up and now, and now Rusty's 6-5 up so you never say die and it ain't over to the fat lady sings and that's the beauty of our game I guess we've got um We've got Matt Bolton peeking over our shoulder here as well. Matt, Matt Bolton is an uh, unbelievable world-class uh, billiards player, as we all know, and very handy on the snooker table also. And he's come over from Perth to, to compete in the big guns. And, uh, and uh, I've, got to, I've got to say it, and uh, yeah, I was going to mention it, Matt, but Matt Bolton actually knocked out the current Australian champion, Brenton Collier. Um, so his, his trip's been definitely worthwhile. He said, I've beaten the Australian champion and I'm ready to come home. That's all he wanted to do, really. <laughs> Bretton's shaking his head right next to me. So, um, well done, Matt. You've um, come over. Well done, Matt. Yeah, well done, Matt. Well, Joel's got a yellow, so he can breathe a bit easier. He's had a couple of dry breaks lately. Nothing easy here. But, uh, ooh, I would say, if anything, the Reds would be to go because uh, they're all they're all on in every pot in, in in they're all in the open. I was just thinking about that for a second. There is one problem yellow, so he's going to go to the reds here. It's a nice shot because you can get that yellow next, uh, red next to the yellow out of the way straight away. Yeah, I, th I think he might be right, one. Six all looks like a definite possibility here. The only trouble I can imagine is, which he probably doesn't, um, Joel with plenty of word experience, but I can imagine if I was playing a match like this, my temperament's not fantastic. I would imagine that 
I may have some thought, some sort of my last, my last frame, and that could be in the back of my head. But with Joel, I don't think this will be a problem. He'd be pretty keen to get this back to 6-0, I'd imagine, and put the fire back on, the pressure back straight on Rusty. What do you think, Matthew, uh, the billiards champion? Yes, well, it's lucky I've uh, won a couple of billiards comps because I've no chance of beating these boys at pool. But uh, I did have a little bit of hard-earned Brenton on Joel on Friday, and I am riding him. But uh, Rusty's definitely been the man of uh, man to beat so far. Uh, the big dusty Sheila, they call him. <coughs> little bit Brenton's missus, actually, Dusty Sheila. But uh, I hope you haven't actually got a girlfriend, Brenton. But uh, uh, did she? Oh, um, apparently, Brenton's okay. No, no, we won't go there on uh, live to air TV. However, Joel and uh, Rusty, a great match. 11-3 in the first set, uh, probably a little surprising, but uh, maybe Rusty eased up a little bit towards the end, thinking about the second game. But Joel, uh, Joel's mental concentration, his professionalism is probably second to none in this tournament, and that's why I backed him. Probably, as far as professionalism goes, you'd probably say that Joel Young and Ron Kelly from Perth are the standout performers in terms of temperament and professionalism. Matthew Bolton and Brenton Collier certainly aren't. And Joel looks like he's got a great chance to go out here. Well done, Matt. You can probably just knock this in, roll the last thread in, and probably play the eight in the corner. It doesn't have to do anything special here. Ah, uh, the, the middle. Thank you, Brenton. Hit the corner of the middle. Yeah, that'll do. Just has to roll this in, and um, he's looking at the corner, but I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if he tried to, to screw this back. He did have a look. Yeah, well, this is the second time I've seen the jigger being used in that, actually. Not many, you don't, don't usually need it in this game. I think he's going to do the clever thing here and just roll this in. Yeah, good shot. Stun. That is a stunning shot, and I um, don't think I've ever seen Joel miss this shot, so let's just assume it's 6 all. That'll be a good win for Joel. Lost the last 